Um, the, the, the vantage point is like around here somewhere, so you're fine right now. Okay. Um, so I'm speaking to Rada Blank. Yes. And you were at the Screenwriters Lab uh, like last week. Just um, last week. With, with a great, uh, awesome titled 40 uh, year old version. V E R S I O N. Yes. yes. Uh, I love the play on, on <laughs> the, the familiar title from uh, Steve Carell. Right. Um, and you already have a a great CV um, <laughs> as a playwright, but um, not only the writing, but you're also in producing. So um, the first question I have for you is, um, how does your background in, in being a playwright not only contribute to this story, which is on, uh, uh, it might be autobiographical, I'm not really it sure. Is, yeah. um, so how does your background um, in, in as a playwright, as a writer, uh, inform you on the writing process specifically for this project? Um, that's a great question. I think the thing about playwrights is we, people probably hire us to write for their TV shows because we're obsessed with character. And as a person who wasn't necessarily trained to write, the thing I have learned is like knowing a character at the core is like crucial to storytelling. Like when you know the character, you can kind of throw them into any scene or situation and you, you pretty much know how they're going to respond to it. So I think, you know, it is autobiographical. It's me. It's mm -hmm. like a heightened version of me. It's It's got some mockumentary elements You don't look to 40. It. I'm over 40. You don't look 40 at all. But I moist, moisturize. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, I was obsessed, and I get this from being a playwright, with the journey of my character. Yes, it's based on me, but I, what the lab helped me to do was kind of separate myself from the character I've created, so I could really like earn certain elements of my script um, and, and step away from it, look at it objectively. Because there were things in there that w was inferred, but I hadn't even realized that there were holes, you know, because it's my life. Mm -hmm. and. Um, or a heightened version of it, I should say. Um, but yeah, I feel like I'm obsessed with character and that's because I'm a playwright, completely. So you go to bed at 3 a.m., uh, you wake up at 3 a.m. and this character is doing something new to, to their found, the foundation of their, their life story or their own timeline. Yeah, yeah, I'm I, a lot you, of it informed by me, yeah. but I'm learning to create some things that aren't me just so that, because I'm also going to be directing this film, mm -hmm. and I need to be able to objectively approach the story. Um, what know? are your uh, writing habits and techniques? Um, I think if I were to speak to all 12 lab people, I think more or less everybody has their unique style. Sure. Uh, some wake up at 5 a.m. and they go to a coffee shop. Uh, since you're well-versed in the form already, I imagine that you already have uh, your own blueprint, professional blueprint. How do you go about... Uh, My blueprint and technique is the anti-technique um I, again i didn't go to school uh, to learn how to write mm -hmm. I, i've learned i've created my own syllabus in a way um when i you know when i'm in new york i go to the lincoln center archive where you know every play that's performed off broadway and on broadway um, is archived and they're in this library and I've just gone there to study plays especially at a time when I couldn't afford a hundred and fifty dollar ticket I knew that once it closed it would show up in the archive uh -huh. so I've, I've looked at previous work as a, a study on how people can um, manifest story but when it gets down to writing story the thing I, I make sure I do is just make myself open and available to however the voices, um, I know that sounds crazy, but however the voices show up, I, I just make sure I honor them and like try to create, you know, I'm not the person who actually gets up at five o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. you know? I'm the person who could be in the middle of a very intense conversation and one of the characters will start speaking over here and I'll be like, uh, excuse me, Eric, I gotta excuse myself. <laughs> and I'll go and just jot things down. Um, but I'm that kind of person. I'm, I'm very extreme. You know, I will hand myself over to some writing for like 72 hours straight. And uh, my mom, binge, God rest her binge soul. Write. I binge write. And my mom, God rest her soul, she just would like call and be like, I know you're writing. I just want you to eat, maybe take a shower, you know, wash the important parts, put some sustenance into your body. The writing will be there. And 
I don't know that I feel that way, that the writing will be there. I always feel like I just have to answer the calling when it's there. Yeah. Since you're looking to direct this project as well, are there any, uh, what are your reference points in terms of visual, in terms of arts, in terms of music, in yeah. terms of like, what, what, what are you a sponge particularly, like where, are, where's your radar antennas uh, yeah. pointed? Yeah, well because I am 40 plus, um, I grew up on New York films from the 70s. Okay. So like Cindy Lumet, yeah. um, Hal Ashby, Woody Allen, and um, who I think their contemporary might be is Louis C.K. I mean, it's a it's going to be a very New York film, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And um, all the things that are beautiful and stinky and nasty about my hometown will show up. But I feel like I've already ha got a great archive of like people presenting New York as another character in mm -hmm. the story. And so now I just want to update it and, and, and present it through the lens of an African-American woman who, you know, is of, uh, comes out of hip hop generation X. And so it's New York, um, but it's also New York, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's like, there's a flavor there that I, I have yet to see in these New York films. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm very heavily influenced by these guys. Like I absolutely love their work, but now I want to um, tell that story in, in my own way. It's, mm -hmm. it's my own love letter to my home. So tonally it might resemble, I mean, that's my favorite period in American <laughs> film is the 70s. So yeah. tonally it might embrace certain facets of that, but I'm shooting it in black and white Okay. because I want it to feel grungy. I feel like New York has become... Sanitized? Sanitized. There's an industry there. It's all about commerce and color and pop. Like if you go down uh, the, block, the street of Times Square now, there's a lot of sound and a lot of noise yeah, and a pollution. lot of color, yeah. right? And it's just oversaturated. And I think black and white kind of brings it down and allows you to focus on the characters and not all the things happening around them. So that's one way. Um, but, you know, shooting in Harlem, shooting in Brownsville, you know, places that um, aren't as gentrified or, you know, ha there's still like an old New York still there. You know, yeah, they, they say still that, have that character. Yeah, yeah, that, where that character is present. You know, they say that in 20 years, the New York accent will be obsolete. And so I'm hoping to capture how the New York accent shows up in Harlem and in Brooklyn and in the different immigrant communities that still, you know, create the flavor in New York. I'll, I'll end with two questions. Um, why is this a story that you need to tell? Why? Okay, so the 40-year-old version is about a New York playwright who's down on her luck who decides um, that the only way she can salvage her voice is to become a rapper at 40. And you know, I'm a person who is still very much a part of the culture. Um, I can recite, you know, anyone from Kendrick to Scarface. And I feel like as a woman, you know, as women in the culture of hip hop, we always have to work harder. Mm -hmm. And the industry is always asking you to sell sex. And so I want to show, you know, someone who is influenced by the culture, but not in a way where they want to become famous. They just love the music and love the culture that surrounds the music. And I just, again, I don't think I've seen a story about that mm -hmm. that speaks to people who are my age, who still have something to say where the culture is concerned. Because, you know, something happens when I tell people I'm a rapper, their immediate response is to laugh. And I used to be mad at that. And now I'm just using, you know, the platform as hum of humor to kind of present the story. But like, I, even in the film, my character's like, what? Like, you age out of having something to say? Mm -hmm. Like, I still care about the culture. And honestly, like, you know, I, I'm not to sound like an old bitty, but like, th the music of today is not nearly as rich as it used to be. And so I'm hoping that, like, bringing this question forward is like, does hip hop have room? Uh, for a 40 overweight black woman's voice, <laughs> you know? Um, and um, the film, I think, will kind of create the answer to that question. I, I know the answer is yes, but, you know, I think it's interesting to pull people along the journey to see how things bear out. Because uh, it is a crazy notion for mm -hmm. someone to say at 40, I want to do a mix it, I want to perform, I have something to say. And so, um, I've, I've, as a performer, 
I think people come expecting some maybe kind of novelty act, but I've been rhyming since I was nine years old. Mm -hmm. So it's something that comes very natural to me. And, um, you know, I'm excited to share this kind of crazy journey with my audience. I think, I I think the passion for words never, you know, you'll, you'll I imagine you might be doing crossword puzzles in your seventies. Like, like <laughs> right. when you have a passion for the written yes. word, um, whether it's in rhyme or just, uh, you know, just on pen and paper. Uh, yeah. Um, I imagine that it sounds as if you're pretty much advanced with your ideas for the film. You have strong, bold ideas. Mm-hmm. I imagine that you might also have, and we don't have to mention names, but are you, are you somewhere like, where are you in the casting process? Cause there's a lot of great, um, uh, actresses of that age range right now and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm learning to appreciate as a cinephile right. that a lot of people of this demographic don't get great juicy roles right so I imagine this is part of like your 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 are you at a fun interesting point in a brainstorming process well the first role is already cast congratulations and that's me okay. I'm playing okay okay my lead that makes it easier and um, you know I'm trying to stick to like it being a true New York film. So I'm hiring like New York actors to play themselves um, and New York actors to play characters, you know, maybe that are a stretch. And then I want to populate the film with real New Yorkers. Okay. You know, so I don't have someone pretending to be an older Korean immigrant man. I'm actually, you know, scouring my neighborhood in Harlem and finding someone who's like, and there are plenty of people there who I know and are willing to talk. And, you know, I just want to capture I want it to feel like a mockumentary or feel like a documentary, uh-huh. so I feel like I need real people in there. Um, but it's it's almost cast, really, and I feel like coming to Sundance has helped. You know, my producers on the film, Stephanie Elaine and Mel Jones, are also here with another film. Okay. And I connected with them before I got in the lab. But being at the festival is really helping to create a synergy and an anticipation for the project. Yeah. So I feel like the problems, um, you know, there are problems that I'm going to have and challenges around casting that I think are already being solved in the cosmos in some uh-huh, weird way. Uh-huh. Like I feel like the people who are going to show up are going to show up. And there's like a surprise cameo in there. I'm not going to tell you who it is. Great. But, um... Even that person, as a, as big of a per- person as they are, I just have a feeling that you know when they learn the backstory of like the making of this film and me applying for for Sundance Lab since I was in my twenties and finally wow. getting in, I think that that might appeal to them and they're like, okay, I'll give you two hours to shoot me for this little cameo. That's great. That's yeah, great. yeah. Um, so so. Um... Part of the thing with the labs is like they destroy you and they support you at the same time. Oh it's a really uh, strenuous, rough process, but yes. it's it's tough love. Yes. Um, so I'd like to know what facet did you come out of the labs that you're most confident about that you might not have been beforehand? Well, we went through several, you know, elements of of uh, training and workshops and observation of our work and. Um, it was in one of the one-on-one meetings with one of my mentors, and this was towards the end. So mm-hmm. we had six amazing mentors, people who are well-read, produced numerous times, like award-winning storytellers. And um, one of them said, this is your first film. And I said, yeah. And they were like, I don't think you should direct it. And I think if I would have had been, you know, uh, had that question or that idea put to me at the beginning of the process, it might have shaken me a little bit, Mm -hmm. but I had been broken down and built up in such a great way before I got to them that I knew that I was like, no, you know, I'm sure, you know, um, Lena Dunham, you know, had the same question to her when she was going to do Tiny Furniture and I'm going to shoot this movie and star in it and write it. And, um, but I, I feel like the lab, they're so smart about curating the advisors for each project Mm -hmm. that it's almost like they know you're going to be faced with that challenge when you meet with this person. Um, but the feedback I got was immeasurable. Um, and the different exercises that we got as writers really, really challenged us. And it was very challenging for me because again, I'm playing Mm -hmm. my main character. And so I, I, I mean, they shook me up, you know, like every day we'd, we'd, we'd meet up as fellows and look at each other like, oh my God, like I didn't think that I could be broken down as much as, as I have been, 
but by the end, I was just grateful for every single moment, you know, because I'm, I, my script is going to be undeniably good, mm -hmm. and I, I owe a lot of that to Sundays. It was, it was, it was good mm -hmm. when I came in, and because they pick good scripts and good stories, but now I know I'm going to make a great film, and um, I've been challenged, or I'm looking at the film in ways that I hadn't been before. Yeah, and so I'm, I feel so grateful to you know Michelle Satter and all the people at the Sun of the Screenwriting Lab for selecting me for this process because to get to sit sit down with people who just know story mm -hmm. but then at the same time stand up for your own um, immeasurable immeasurable cool. yeah. well then I we look forward to hearing about the film in yeah. production and yeah. all, and seeing you on the on the big screen. Yes, me too. Well, cool. Hopefully, I'll be back here next year. With, with knock on film. knock on cement here yeah. or whatever the hell this is. Uh, thank you so much for your thank time. You. Appreciate.